Oh, for flip's sake. <laughs> Do you leave it in? <laughs> no, it's <laughs> not. Right. Um, I think so. Yeah, welcome everybody along to another podcast, What's All Gone Wrong. And, and today we've got another amazing producer from the Bounce Scene, very well known. Um, and he's from close by as well in Belfast. Mm. It's Lee Keenan. How's it, it going? It's going good. Thanks for having me. Good. good. Um, I'm glad you come on, like, because um, yeah. you're one of the ones like from our kind of scene, you know, like yeah, yeah. critical mass yourself. Yeah, yeah. There's not that many of us here. Jamie, have had in too. Because um, banners, banners, banners always say they're Steve. <laughs> Steve, both guys. He always mentions me, you and Jamie. Yeah. <laughs> was... I was going to ask. Can you think of anybody <laughs> else to try and get on? Like, I yeah. must say to Ben, like, by coming on, he would have My a good banners one. Good. Ch- Tyler banners and find these guys. So these... Yeah. Um. So, the the idea of this here is just really the about your journey in music. Yeah. Yeah. Really. So if we go back to um, where did you grow up and stuff? You know? So I was originally born in England. So I was, oh, right. I was born in Paddington. So my mum, my mum had moved from my mum's from originally from Waterford down south. So my mum had moved to England from Waterford, and that's where she met my my dad. Yeah. And then yeah, born in Paddington till I was about three. Then my mum and dad moved from England till over till Belfast because my dad's side of family was all from. Are down Belfast, yeah. so we came over here when I was about three. Then just basically grew up in our down from, from three up from three onwards. Can you remember anything from England? No, is it just a absolutely somebody told no, you I no, lived in England, but I you feel, can't remember? No, I can see it on my birth certificate. It says Paddington. Like, whoa, I thought I was, I thought I was born in Ireland. <laughs> 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 I've not like, been here all my life. I'm... Like, you didn't even tell me, mommy, like, oh, hi, son. So, yeah. and I can't remember anything. From England at all, maybe. No. No. What's your earliest childhood memory? Just in I can't remember two weeks ago, wrong, so yeah. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> nah, well, earliest childhood memory. Well, I can't. I always said I'm going to remember coming, coming over like in a black taxi, yeah. coming down the street. And they always say I'm going to. Can I go to the toilet, Mrs. Like, she stop <laughs> calling me, Mrs. I've always had that like we dead respectable do you still lost still lost her two years later and I go to the toilet That's, I do the same I, yeah. I, I used to go up to my, my aunt Margaret's every yeah. Friday night and I used to sit there <laughs> and I used to like bust at pee because I was dead nervous about can I go to the toilet and she's like you don't need to ask oh, that's right. I still get this day like wrap my door like, why are you wrap my door for <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, wrap, I wrap it like this here so do right, I can't burn it seeing people wrap my doors like boom you're like what mm. the f- like, Really? I um, do the, the Chinese delivery sometimes, yeah. you know. So, <laughs> see, wrapping the bloody doors. I, I'm the same. See, when it comes to late at night and the house looks dark, yeah. I'm like, we wrap because I'm scared of wrapping somebody up and like, I've got the wrong house, yeah. which and happens a lot. They're like, my child in bed. Yeah, it happened, to, yeah. it happened to me before. I got, um, was I was 25 Avonlea Gardens or something, but it was yeah. meant to be 25 Avonlea Park, and I went to the wrong one. And I was rapping it for ages, and some woman came down with a baby, and she was like, "What the f- do I want? Here's yeah. me Chinese. We didn't f- order in Chinese." And I go, "Shit, I'm sorry, I'm sorry." Some Belfast, yeah, <laughs> some Belfast people are just straight down the lane, yeah. cut you in two. So from then on, I was like, oh, "I rap slow to start, and then I get a bit more." Yeah, <laughs> like, so don't answer that. That's me, bro. So I just <laughs> rap it a couple of times. So do. Um, so it was any of your family into music or whatever? Um, music was no, no wrong music. No, well, my brother before before I ever started getting the music, my brother had bought a set. My mum had bought my brother a set of techniques back maybe about 15, 15 16 years ago mm. for one Christmas. He, she had actually bought them off my dad's sister's partner. Remember, remember how much he bought the set in my pioneer mixture? I think it was like three hundred and fifty pounds. Technic record. Yeah, yeah, technic yeah. records, and then we didn't have no hi fi at the time, so. We were like listening, we were like putting the records down, trying to know, like listen through the needle even. Yeah, I, was like, here. I was always so intri- intrigued then. That's a funny thing because I remember like you get your decks, but yeah. what they hook them up to? They weren't mine in my broad, but I was always like, my, and they were, they were in my broad room for like a month or two before Christmas. Mm. So I was always in like talking about them so I was always intrigued then. We and my brother went to, is it? Where Belfast Underground Studio was. Yeah, Mixmaster. Yeah, so we were, the, the record um, was Denzel Pump It Up. Yeah. Yeah, so I was a record that I bought. So I was always like in the band, but then my brother just lost completely interest in it. Mm. I think it was like a like a generational thing because he was getting taught in school, no one kind of DJ. So yeah. I was like, I want to set attacks. And then I tell you a funny story about them set attacks, really. Um, yeah. 
So we actually gave them away, and I was like, I took no interest at that time. And then like we were out one, they were in the cupboard for years, so they were. Mm. Um, came in one day and they were out the back. My dad just came to come. I was like, oh, like they were worth money. Like, yeah. We're in so out some. I was like, no, they are not. They're coming back in. So we ended yeah. up taking them back in. And then about maybe about a year or two later, my brother had actually sold them for twenty quid. What? <laughs> yeah, twenty quid. The guy who sold them to actually had them still now. This day one was but. Uh-huh. Needed service, but the other one was working perfectly. Like, so, yeah. And I never get it at all. 20 pounds he's holding for, and that's no word of a lie. At theirs. <laughs> still, this day, still, it still sickens me. So, yeah. Because at, t- at that time, I wasn't really like, uh-huh. I was only like about 13, so I was only still a young kid. But I had 20 pounds pocket, it was like, you <laughs> <amazing>, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Can I, so, can I do something for you? So, I would tell people, and they were like, Oh, he sold, he sold them for 20 for twenty. Because they pounds. hold their, their price, <laughs> really, like the techniques. I still like... don't have a side, I still play, I'm playing the side of Newmark. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where I play. So even now, I still, still want to sell a set of techniques. I've still my first ever set of yeah. techniques. I bought one in 1990. The guy he sold them to got them, um, got them serviced by Techniques Repair and I. Got mm. them spray printed and all. Got them spray printed blue and all. They're still running this day. 20 <laughs> quid. 20 quid, bro. No. So that was when at least for start getting in, into the music. I always mm. had that with England. But other than my brother, it was really no one... There's no one really in the family. Yeah, that's wasn't kind of music. weird because yeah. a few people I ask like about are they really into music like no no music in their family background yeah. but like they're like fully into it. It's just yeah, weird, yeah. isn't it? Like, I, so yeah. it was my brother with the, with the final text and I just thought we intrigued them. What sort just, of DJs and stuff were you listening to then to get for the music? Cool, no, it was always like the local ones for me. Do you remember the of a DJ called DJ Lizard? DJ Lizard? Liam O'Neill you call him. No. Sweet Day used to play in, the, in a place called Jamaican. Yeah. So it was like Liam O'Neill, Christopher McGuire and Connor Brown. But, uh, Liam O'Neill's music was maybe like the early 90s German, mm-hmm. like the Euro trance yeah. sort of stuff. No, like Move Your Body and... What years would this have been then? Maybe, this would have been maybe about 2005. Yeah. Uh, so, so I was, was always like, I would have got his, his CDs were off. Remember his TFR lock home? Remember, yeah. Remember he yeah. record CDs? Yeah. So I used to always get his CDs and I was just trying to like cut, you know, like, you know, like cut the songs you know, like from my own, but it never ever worked because it was always trying, because they were always getting mixed in. So, yeah. and then what I would have done, I always would have took in songs and like put them in the, the virtual DJ and speed them up or something yeah. like that. So it was always like doing something with something. It was always music, music. So that was, was the era, like the, the PC DJ, like the Colin Scotland yeah. ranking and stuff. And they would yeah. have just got like a Scott Brown track, speeded it up. Um, yeah. And then there would have been like, this is my new song. I think that's, that, that was me for a load of years. I was like, oh, sounds class. Chipmunks. <laughs> yeah. And people who said me, you're speaking them. I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, not that weird. Like, like, but a lot of the kids loved all the... Even, uh, even when I was in... The, um, even when I went to technology, I was bringing my laptop and I was doing electric. And I'm like, what are you doing? I was like, making mashups. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I always had like my laptop and my music with me. So the, what did you use for um, doing the mashups? So I was using tractor shows at the time. Tractors. I had like a wee tractor control. Oh, did you actually mix them properly and then record? No, I was just so before that there I had the software so then I was, then after that I bought the wee new mark M one so it was like a wee silver controller all in one so it was. I yeah. was maybe back about twelve, thirteen years old, so it was. And like the wee the wee circle the wee, wee mini circle job yeah. was on. Then so I was just grabbing like a pal and just trying to put just just really experimenting before I got producing music. I was always intrigued like how they how they making this music. Yeah. I always thought you needed some big massive like studio and mm-hmm. do you know what I mean? I always never knew that you just needed a laptop. Yeah. Really not there. So as I got older, done a bit of research. It's like oh, all I need really is a laptop and software. Don't know the software, but I end up getting the head up a lot of things through that wrong. Yeah, like, it's it? so hard. Yeah, so maybe I like, remember we are probably about the same time then as you. I downloaded well, I say uh, downloaded, but illegally Fruity Loops. <laughs> yeah, I think Hank ninety Hank ninety nine percent of people are starting off like illegally downloads their software first. Yeah, you have to like unless just, they're like have a rich parents or yeah. something. You know I mean, fix it. I want to be a DJ. Because it's, like, it's, it's expensive, like so. Ah, it's it crazy. Like so, what was that your first one when you? So you thought. Did you want to be a DJ or did you want to make music or do you no, want to do both or? It was really, DJing was really like a thing I've always wanted to do, but it was never like, I didn't have no tax or anything. Mm. I always took a wee interest and bought that wee first set of tax. And then, do you remember the Melbourne Bounce yeah. music came about maybe about like about 10, 11 years ago? I was mm-hmm. like, as soon as I heard I was like, I was like, I need to start making this. Yeah, that's amazing. As soon as I heard the Will Spark stuff, it was like, I, I just I, that's what really inspired me to start making music was the Melbourne Bounce sort of uh-huh. sound before it became because I clicked on it before it even became anywhere popular before anywhere 
Yeah, because before that, it was like the Clubland stuff was really big for me. Yeah. And then it nosedived around 2012, all the David Gattis stuff. Yeah. And I lost interest big time. Yeah. And then I heard you had TJ R, Ode to Joy. Yeah, yeah. So and 100%. then Will Sparks, Ah, uh, yeah. And yeah. you were like, what's this new music? Yeah. Huh? yeah. And even like, before All Yeah, even like two, three years before All Yeah, yeah. he was making like, he was so like down low key, but he always hears music was was different. They're all different Melbourne mm-hmm. bands. Just that me. offbeat sort of bass. Oh, I was so. I think that's what always gets me. That's the offbeat bass thing. So it is. And I think with an offbeat bass thing on a song, I'm like so intrigued to it. So I'm. And the same, yeah. So it was just like, and it was very minimal. It wasn't like, it wasn't mm-hmm. like a hundred channels and one. It was just like so bass, like we trumpet bass thing, but it uh, sounded so good. It so, sounded. Uh, it sounded so massive. Like. So they always say less is more with it. So yeah. And then the Melbourne bands seem to be that out, and I think of. I think, I'm, I think, I'm, I think I'm sorry about it, about it as well. Like, uh, is it not much then? What does Will no, Spark and stuff do now? Will Spark is more like he changed it about five years ago. He went from like he, I think he didn't sell himself really. He was just more he was doing big gigs, so he couldn't be playing them that uh. sort of sound and then big EDM festival. So he was more like it's really hard to describe a sound now. It's more like it's it's a, it's like a different combination of different. Yeah, it's more like about techno kicks with like horsey screeches. Yeah. I think with his music, it's always been very unique. So it mm-hmm. is. I think he's very different to the rest. So it is. I think he's. I think he's. I think he's really, really great producer. So there. yeah, it's amazing. I, I remember listening to his story a bit. I think I can remember. It was Joel Fletcher. He got him yeah, in the one that. Yeah, they're very good friends. We uh-huh. Joel and, and Joel. Joel never got the credit that the uh-huh. same, but his music is awesome. Oh, yeah. He listened back to it like him ten. I'm like, yeah. I guess me, he makes music ten years ago was still he, oh so good yeah the, very good the uh the melodies like and the the stuff like the the third the, the triplet sort of style yeah, like yeah. they were just were perfect at the time because I loved it that got me sort of back into music I would say the production again um before that there the David Gatta stuff I wasn't interested like you said it was yeah. just no off beats and no energy to it it was just cool too cool uh for me too commercial uh yeah so what was your first then? Um, you start. You you wanted to learn how to make make that stuff. Um, what was your first like sort of door or whatever? Did you so the first how did you door, research? What did you? The, the first door I actually downloaded was a was a thing called Magic's Music Maker. Was it was a free one? So it was mm-hmm. so it was like so I always done like a wee bit of research and I always say so I always I would always like bring in loops. So this was a loop based like a loop based yeah. um production. So I always bring loops and trying to get the structure of the tracks. Before trying to jump into AFL because, as I said, I downloaded AFL before Magic's Maker, Magic's Music Maker five times. I looked at it and I was like, "Whoa!" <laughs> like looking at a spaceship. Yeah. So I was like, "I need something, but for a bit beginner, like I, I could understand." Uh-huh. So I downloaded Magic's Music Maker. Um, used that for about six months or so, and then try to go on because it was very limit. It was very limited at like what you could do on it. Yeah, it was Couldn't like download a... no FST or anything like that. Was all it was all the loops sort of pre-mixed, so you just yeah, sort yeah. Of so you just literally just drag them in blocks. Like, yeah, yeah, blocks. yeah, hundred percent. Like EJ, remember like dance yeah. EJ, so, something so, something like that. But it's wee bit, it's wee bit more fun than that. So at the app was uh, I done EJ too, and um, yeah. that that made you understand how tracks were made. Yeah, hundred percent. Because yeah. you knew where the high hat yeah. then comes yeah, in. You knew 100%. Right, this is a melodic yeah. part. This is where the kick drops out. A wee yeah. bit of a fact here. Gives you a bit of structure of the track yeah. as well, and then then what's in the track also. Would you say like the kick and hi hats, yeah. and bongos, and stuff like that there? And yeah. at that time, it was maybe like it was probably like house music or something. So it was maybe just just whatever. Yeah, well, just whatever lo- was in the loop. So it was. Yeah. Uh-huh. Did you when you were thinking I'm going to make that stuff? Did you think it's going to be easy? I'll be able to do that. Oh, don't get me, yeah, but then it was it was so hard. Like, I could never <laughs> ever get the same sound the day. Hard. I was like, what am I doing wrong? Yeah, I remember like uh, it was pretty loops. I didn't yeah. know how to do a filter. You no, know, like a shh. Yeah, like, yeah. And I was like, I just need to know how to do a filter, and I'll be able to do it. But it was just. So as I said, I was always. I, I think one thing I always do. I was listening too quickly so it was it wasn't like sending away for feedback p- proper feedback it was always like in my head oh it sounds good mm. but I realised it sounded it so you did. were were you doing like full tracks then and sort of giving them to people at that stage no it was pr- what I was doing also um, yeah I was making tracks but uh, oh Jesus Christ they were so embarrassing mm. listen, listening back to them they are like nothing you can't hear it kicks like just bass 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 you know, <laughs> and, so, and then people it's your friends also yeah. your friends are saying oh that's class Oh, that's classy. Yeah, that's you class. can't trust them, can you? They're giving, they're giving you a bit of fire up your heart, so they are. When we listen to they don't understand. They're just trying to make you feel better about yourself, uh, of course. Because they're going like, he made that there, but they yeah. don't understand if it, they can't tell if yeah. it's good or then bad. It, or as soon as they sent the producer, they're like, then they tell you with a heart. You're like, well, actually, you, you do need to hear it. So you do uh, to make you, to make yourself aware, make yourself, do you know what I mean? I remember sending, I'd done a tune. 
it's just all like sample suit guy was I'm work that did, did it with and the street's yeah, gonna rock yeah, right right yeah, yeah. and I sent it to somebody and he was like that's good but can you give me the full rip and I'm like what do you mean full rip it is the full rip and he's like that this is only one two eight and I was like mm. well well, I didn't know it was different oh, things. It was all different things. <laughs> and I'm in bars here. He goes, yeah. no, 320. When he, and I was like, what's that there? There's still some things these days that I'm like, clicking on to. Because you know yeah. I mean? there's always things. There's always room for, I think there's always room for learning in the uh, production call. You like, never, you know? as I say to people. When... I, I, yeah, as I saw. I, so I've got my YouTube channel and all my, all my most of my recommend to be like, all new, like, of like how to make pop music and how to mm. do stuff like that. There. So I always watch wee videos like that there on YouTube, which is always interesting. Is that how you learned it? Did anybody, did you know a producer then close to help no, you or was you just always, self-taught? I was always YouTube. Right? Uh, it was just always like FL, FL Studio tutorials on and then so I was doing electrical engineering after I left school. Mm. Um, sent me to the building site down, down Patrick and I was like, this is not for me. <laughs> it's like, this is definitely not for me. Yeah. So I went back and told him this and he, as I said, I always put my laptop in the pack with me. Yeah. And I always knew like music and he was like, why don't you go up the computers upstairs, do IT, do um. Mm. IT science, so I'm done that for two years. Um, was in a bunch of like rock, no like Rockies, no like yeah. rock. I was so fun. It was so good. Like yeah. I was only one like they say you're only smacking this class. <laughs> I mean, we won one attraction. Everyone's like wearing like rock gear. Yeah, but, was, but their their clothes are probably all ripped and oh, all. So, but they were so willy. So they were I mean, was so sad. Two years was really. So what did you do there? Was it like so well, it was IT, but <laughs> so I was learning computers. But within that space, I was just having a laptop up and I was just learning music within it. So it was because oh, the teacher knew was a bit of a. I was a bit of a runaway back then. No, so I was, just, I just I was, leave him alone. I was a bit of a loose, just let him just, just let him sit over. So He's another was, tech on the on yeah, the thing. Yeah, anyway. but so that so that's, that helped me build computers and all like so. Yeah. I, I was I was always really it's always computers and computers and music. I was always interested in. Yeah. So it always came together with the software and music. So I, I'm completely computer illiterate. Right? Oh, so I even can, installing stuff. I have yeah. to like from Jamie yes. or, or Smickers or like I can't do yeah. anything like that. There, no, like. I'm good with all like computers and building stuff like that. There, yeah. like computer. I give with or James, James built my computer so yeah. he did, like I have no clue at all I just know how to switch it on you know and, how that's and, it. and produce the beats C- Cubius yeah. that's about it no more yeah. Cubius that's about it yeah I've never I've actually never downloaded another one and actually try, I don't know so I was saying about the, about learning about the music so after I went to the electrical engineering I actually went to BCM tech and done music yeah Bob Millfield or yeah Bob yeah. Millfield <laughs> And you needed um, I think it was like three A, three B, no three C G C S E or something. Yeah. So I was just I was going to St Gabriel's College at the time and I was burnt down. <laughs> so I said them. I was just talking a bit of a bluff. I was like, oh, all my GCSEs are burnt down. <laughs> and I think they were like, oh, don't worry, we can sign away for them. So I ended up getting them there anyway. Yeah. But I ended up like catching up in the key stages of of uh. evaluations. But um. I, d- I was I was so dreaming it was like you had like one lesson at like 9 o'clock and you were waiting about 5 hours no. and then you had another lesson for another hour so it was like just then I couldn't have a time so I ended up leaving after about 6 months and just, no. just went to YouTube and just, just said it's a time to put the foot down it's funny you say about the electrical engineering and like you knew you just knew that wasn't for you I was yeah, the same yeah. I'd done painting and I was sitting on the on the building site at eight o'clock in the morning freezing yeah, right. and then getting my cold cheese sandwiches that are frozen <laughs> and then just going this isn't this isn't the life this isn't yeah the, you know? just, I was just like this is definitely not for me uh, so my dolly was a hot carrier all his life but I was a labourer all his life yeah and he, people put pressure on you the older ones yeah. like no you need a trade you need a yeah, trade yeah. you know they even still say this day trade is always good but oh, I was near, always knew at that time I'm just like this is definitely not for, not yeah. for me so like, <laughs> um, 100% like so um, did, did you finish like your after that third you just went fully into the, the studio then when so did when, you start noticing that things were well, getting better <laughs> not things were things have only really started to get better over the last couple of years to be honest it was maybe like dry for like five six years I wasn't seeing no often just producing music just for just for because cause I love it do you know uh-huh. what I mean but you're getting the really need the you need, this, need the need the earn don't you you need the work you need the uh-huh. so but it was me doing it for about five six years maybe just maybe learning the craft and then I was like would not seeing no returns was DJing the odd yeah. Maybe I was DJing more at that time. I was DJing maybe like twice a week at the time. Where were you DJing now? Well, I was DJing. I was I was DJing everywhere at the time. So was I was doing like uh EP. Um, I was doing mostly all around town. I was I was I was very busy back then. So uh-huh. but now over the last maybe year or two, I haven't. What kind of gigs? What was it like? Um, it was all when that Melbourne Brain stuff was about. So it was uh-huh. it was all like because I was only one really about in Belfast doing it. 
yeah. and playing it and producing it. Uh, your but sound now is still very sort of yeah, similar to I'll, I'll, I'll always keep that same sort of sound because I think that's always what people uh, know Lee Keenan for, do you know what I mean? Lee Keenan is known for like the Melbourne and cheesy stuff, so... I think it works better in a club like... Yeah, uh, 100%, you're, you're yeah. Doing it because some of the like the more dance stuff just with the big riffs and all and it yeah, just, yeah. it's too heavy for a club especially the speed of speed of it like um I oh, the metal point bench stuff is a one two yet like so it is do you know uh, what I mean? and then it just sort of I don't know hack it faster than it just it is I have noticed this over the last um or maybe over the last years it's always been but I've but over the last couple of years around my my music's always been in, it's always been in between like one to eight to one forty five. Mm. See I would do something at one to one fifty I'm like it's too fast uh, for me. I'm assuming. But then listen to it it's like I thought it's class, but then I go to, my, I go try and produce it. I'm like, this is too fast for me. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? But I listen to it. It's like that's so good. I'm same a, way, same way with Makina stuff. Yeah, when I listen to Makina. I'm like, that's fucking class. But I go and produce it. It's like, <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, it's like weird sort of. So yeah, I like it. I like it slowed down a bit sort of. I like. It. I think it's one forty is a sweet spot. Yeah, for yeah. Me, like I, I think, think, I think it's a good older as well. I think the music I, starts to slow down. As well. I've noticed it going up and down. Yeah, like, like four or five times. Like, but uh, the ones that I. Like the trance era at its height was like one three eight one forty, and the clubland era at its height was one forty. Yeah, yeah. You know, so like all the yeah, 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 all around the world stuff. And yeah, stuff flipping like fell and ultra yeah, and yeah. stuff, and people forget it was one forty. They still think bounce whatever is one fifty. Yeah, yeah. And then one five five. I, I think, think faster. I think that's sort of one fifty is starting to go in the region of dunk, isn't it? After, yeah. After it hits after one fifty, then you always say like bounce dunk. Ah. Uh, because that's sort of the music I produce. There's not really like a sort of genre for it. You know what I mean? It's uh, not like. Club lands not bounce, not yeah. you know what I mean? It's really hard to pull a pinpoint. I sort of say I'm, I'm not a bounce DJ, but I would yeah. play some bounce yeah, tracks, yeah, like yeah. you know. But I just, yeah, I wouldn't say I would always yeah just say I'm a dance DJ. Yeah, uh-huh. not that I'm embarrassed by it. I look no. bounce is my thing, but I love yeah, bounce. Yeah, uh, I like it too. Like we yeah. just I don't want it because it's too narrow. It's just yeah. that. I think people take a mic out of the bounce scene as well. Uh-huh. It's like it's because it's dunk as well. You know what I mean? It's like people make a complete mark out of it because. It's, like we have a trance like dead here techno yeah. dead series what you're saying about smicks so that's what the sort of in it like of course 100% yeah <laughs> that's the that's the image of because you still get them all like MC and all do you oh, know what I mean and, pe- and people and like in the kitchens and all and what pe- do you think MCs? Oh, fuck me I've I've that's not for me mate I yeah. hate it absolutely hate it yeah she's like oh, what, 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 that's right and yeah. I'm like do people like this like here stuff? Of, like a, maybe like a wee bit of augie or something yeah, in between. Yeah, like a wee yeah. host where they sort of lift it up in the coke. So I would do that if I'm DJ and I would just, the odd time I would go, here yeah. we, here we, here we yeah. up and go. Or I've, like, I've, like each of their, like their, their, their talent of what to do. Because uh, like, I couldn't do something like uh, that. It's, like, it's very hard, like so it is. And I think it's poetry and like rapping and I think and it's stuff, just, I think it's just where they're from. I think it's just like England, MCs. Uh, I, I, I think it's just, not, I think it's just the MCs. Just, the I culture? Mean, it's just the culture, so it is more than anything, uh, yeah. And they're also... They're like as popular and they're always as like, the DJs. And they're always like, so they're like made always in their in TNs yeah. and their fucking hair, of course, yeah. And they're always getting labelled straight away, of course. That's the image, like. One hundred percent. I think it's a, I think it's a dunk image. Yeah, <laughs> it's like so my god, I mean, so dunk stuff. So, so but I prefer even when I'm sitting back in the house, me like I prefer listening to like wave melody trance, like yeah, yeah. I don't. If I'm sitting chill now. I'm stuck on a week couple of records, so it's always like down, down beat trance, really, not like yeah. Yeah, I'm the same. Like I would let like make my records. I would listen to the Trance ninety nine two thousand, or I would listen yeah. to some cinematic stuff from like Hans Zimmer and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. There, do you have some at your collection too? Uh, right? Yeah, not class. records, but just like, like, yeah, yeah. On the on because we have a big record collection too. So uh, yeah, um, so well, we'll talk about your record collection then. So did you get your brother's records in? Or just um, start from scratch. No, I always knew he had. He was. He always had records like you know, like the Dolphin records, like Finn records, like the Finn oh, label. Yeah, yeah. They were like all like fifty thousand watts of funky and all, and, like yeah. that sort of stuff. So I always like had a wee inkling of always like new, but that my I've only started collecting records over two years old. Yeah. Have so I've I've got them all over the last two years. It was always like, but it's just been. So I get something in my head. It's always like yeah. she calls me a horror. She does. <laughs> I I came back in the other week ago with a big with. With that big, yeah. and I had to I had to head hop it over my dad's. <laughs> I had to leave a few boxes over, which is only hundred yards from my house. But I was going over every other day. Just left me. He's like, "You brought the air like that. I need to sort them all out." <laughs> so it took me like a, about a month or two to sort them all out. And the money you've got, you said to me, was two thousand or something. Two and a half, two and fuck, and a half up to two thousand six hundred now, maybe. I, go. I think banks uh, just any like... any more. Uh, if I bring any more, and I'll be kicked out of the house, hundred percent. How do you pick them? Are you go on the discogs? No, you just I, no. Early most... by collections. Mostly collections, so how how this whole 
record thing phase came about with me was I was I was gaming stuff. I was collecting gaming stuff. Mm. So I tell her gaming stuff, and so she calls me a hoarder. She's in my covers like fucking hundreds and hundreds of games. You know, so, it is. <laughs> so I was getting sick of there, and then I used to I I I call myself a Charlie Shop man. So I was starting one Charlie Shop. And the castle court make myself way up the botanic. <laughs> so I would literally do every Charlie shop. That's where you get all the bargains, of course. Um, so Never thought of doing that. The last Charlie shop, I've seen a lot of records of a pound, a pound each. So it was like a uh, motorcycle, silence. I was like, I know that these are. So I ended up mm. grabbing like 20 of them, bringing them back home, going this class, and like, they were like 20 and 30 quid each. Because I only got, I only grabbed 20 because they were out heavy. Uh, so I went back there the next day, got a taxi, and got the taxi man the way they'd say, and just bought the whole lot. <laughs> Right, because I needed it was like I was like, see under records there and I knew I could get a wee bit of bargain over yeah. so I'm going to get like 200 quid for about 350 proper like trans cloth every yeah. every record was like Pearl River oh, all the best like, all so Cafe Nero was down the street so I went down and bought them all the whole the wee, all the workers in the Cafe Nero because mm. I felt a wee bit yeah. like I just got some collection or so there. and then Brilliant. and then ever since I was just buying collections really, mate. So mm. I had collections I got the other week. I was, I was collecting figures and I had like, you know, like, at, at the clown dolls and all. Mm. I'm, always, I'm, I'm always collecting for stuff, so yeah. It's yeah. always like in my brain. So I put them up on Facebook Marketplace and I want to do a trade for them for the records. Yeah. That was up for, it was up for months upon months and then some guy just randomly texted me. said, oh, I'll trade you because he was more in the figures. Mm. And he was like more of a reseller. So I just always wondered like, how he get that, how did he get all them records? Because he had no interest in him. Mm. So I ended up getting like two boxes full because I knew that but oh I mean she was going fuck go nuts. <laughs> so I ended up bringing two boxes in, but then there was like some of the stuff in it was uh-huh. was it the like, SP SPQR and the dreams like from yeah. The, I was always one I always wanted sort of and, yeah, and I was like Jesus yeah. and I was like he I felt he had another like three boxes down there and I still had on half of my of my marble figure collection. I was like I need the rest in because I knew it was in it. I yeah. knew there was some gem in so I taxed him next day. Like, do you want the rest? And he's like, oh, no, I problem. Come next day and give me the rest. We did it. It's so some it, taxes in that, like, when oh, you I, start buying it. So I end up, so through that collection, it was, like, all, all, like, letters. And it was, like, I know it was someone's personal collection because it was all, mm. like, flowers and all. And then, mm. and then there was, like, some other, it was, like, there was an acetate, a dub plate of, of Hocus Pocus, Hocus Pocus. Jeez. The unreleased remix of Mario, the one that Pablo Gargan used to play back yeah. in the early days in 83. So I actually taxed Lee Hanna, no Lee Hanna. Yeah. Could he had ID for me and he had sent it to X-Ray. X-Ray said uh, that's what the shooting, but excuse me, he X-Ray's been looking at all his life. What uh, I was going to say, did you go into Discord and see how much that was? I can't, I can't, I can't, you can't even source this track online. You can't even source the, I think it's like, I think it's like one of them tracks lost in time. Uh, and I had the dub played off it, the geez. acetate off it. Is it still playable? Because oh, 100%. Yeah, I played it and it was like, after someone told me, so I stopped playing it. But what I was going to do for people, because it's, it's like one of them tracks that, you can't if you go on typing in Pocus uh, Pocus 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 you can't you can't, can't find you can't it find it. the only thing you can find in it is the Pablo Gargano remix is Pablo Gargano Heather's remix yeah so Ben was just looking bad off me but I can't put a price on something else so oh, I'm just no, keeping it's... the front of Claxton and then the Jeez. guy called Colin McGrew no Colin McGrew Col- oh Colin yeah so he was he was like I was looking at all my leash fucking Johnny Barst uh, he loves the old scheme doesn't he and he was like can you at least rip it for me and I was like oh, I'll <laughs> do that but then I was like so it's going to detract from the value of the record, uh, but music's for sure. Uh, so I think I will probably will. You still, you still got the source. I still like, got the know. acetate and the, and the because it's big heavy record. So this, so it was, I only put it on a couple of days ago. It was in, it was in. I always thought it was in like a wee, mm. like a Michael Jackson something or something. Because it was a few, it was a few Euro sims, you no know, like a few Euro pop within that big collection. Yeah. So I just put the one side, and then I put it on the RD, and I was like, oh, that's hocus pocus. And I could never, I couldn't source a remix or no, I couldn't mm. find it for no love, no money. Then I was end up finding it. So then, all right. so it was not clashing. There were some really gems in it. So it was, How did so, you start to like all like the old school? Because if you're younger, then... I was always, I was always old school. Sure, I'm thirty one, so I am. Yeah. Right. So I was always like around about the early, like the early two thousands, late nineties. So that was always my sound. But yeah. then as I go back a wee bit. I like, I like the Euro dance, like mm. the, the old the old sound Euro dance stuff. Like the Italian sort of. Yeah, dance I love all that stuff like that there. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. I bef- have have a wee dunk. I was banned at the start. I was banned loads and loads of dunk records off their songs, and I was like, "Why am I doing this? Why wouldn't I go?" Uh-huh. <laughs> I was like, "Cause I won't even put them near the fucking turntable song." Cause yeah. I, it's not that I hear. I just don't. They're my. I oh know it's a, they're my yeah. bottom bottom of yeah, my pile. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know, like I have my yeah. trance at the top. Of them, my, yeah. Even happy hardcore and like. Uh, yeah. 
you know, the hard house and stuff, but that stuff's just bad. I never really. I'm the same. I was buying it to start because I was. Cause I was uh, you just want to have it. it. And then, but I won't even go near it. I mean, I'll just sit there and <laughs> run away. Even like the wee club long stuff, I'll just sit there and just. Because yeah, I'm starting my legs back up again because I have that record collection now. It's just yeah. going to waste, you know what I mean? I need to start doing my legs again. But how so. did you start doing the legs? It was. Jimmy first, then you, or was it just both same I think it was or? just more of like, everyone's doing it. Uh, I think it was more like during COVID as well. And then I had nothing to do, so every other day I was just doing a live every day, so it was. And then, How did you get, because uh, your your page had like, many people did you have on your page? But before that, there were pages, I had a page at 90, I had a page uh, at 93, and it was deleted, so it was. Because, I had a page actually get deleted, I'll tell you funny. So, me and my partner, so at, at the time it was me and my partner's admin on the page because if you don't have another admin on the page if you delete, if you delete your Facebook mm. it will delete the page do right, you know what right. I mean so for we security reasons so we just put an extra admin in so at the time I was sitting skimped no money sitting struggling with the music and stuff I got a message up making music at 3 o'clock in the morning one time I got a message off this random person saying no like if if um he sent me his website and all look, look very legit and all like I'll pay you to put like the his logo on the top right hand of my videos because my videos at the time were reaching thousands and yeah. thousands thousand people so I ended up sending me like a wee bit of Facebook business manager link so I ended up clicking on it saying and it woke up the next day remove re, you remove me as admin remove oh, her as admin no, and stole your page stole my page and then started uploading all like all weird stuff no like of like oh, I was like all weird shit no like of the human body and all then oh, God. it was like people thought it was still amazed because <laughs> And then, so the page, that page, you know, getting deleted. So I ended up starting just brand new from, it was actually on my birthday, because I actually said, yeah. <laughs> it was actually, I actually created Happy birthday. Happy <laughs> birthday. And that was about, I think it was five years ago now, so it was the, oh, about four or five. Because it was just being, I have got that much fun, it was just being consistent every day. I was, I was, I was literally uploading a photo every single day on oh, Facebook. Yeah. If you go on my photos, there's probably like hundreds and hundreds of music videos on. Yeah. And they're all, they all gather attention. Like, you and Jamie get into it at the right time. Yeah. Like his is, He's in 19 or 100 yeah, yeah. or something as well. Like, you're wrong. I probably still have three people. I probably, oh, he's probably bought. No. Not one thing. It's not for me, mate. It's uh-huh. not me. Because you can tell, you can tell when people's bought their thing. Because uh-huh. you can click on their legs. It's all like Eastern Europeans. It's all like Chinese people. It's all like foreign people. Mm. Like the way I can call, I could call a few people out now. Let's still do it now. But it's not, it's not me. And they're really big DJs. Like, yeah. Funny enough, I've, mine are all people like you know. But see, recently, my last yeah. three videos have been getting over a thousand legs. And yeah. it's all. Weird people, yeah, and yeah. I go. That's a now, weird name. Where are they from? And go in, and they're like from now, Romania and hot, stuff. Now, as because it happened to Stephen Straub. Stephen Straub was the same. Stephen Straub uploads a video, and only like, he probably his Facebook has about ten thousand. But he would probably only get like a probably like hundred foot, hundred yeah. fall, hundred likes, likes for a video. Yeah. But his has two, two, two thousand eight hundred, and he had put up saying oh, all Eastern Europeans love us. So I clicked on it. Was like all oh, like weird. It's all like uh. weird writing. So it is so. Maybe it's just the maybe it's just the algorithm of it. Yeah, so just it is. trying to get through. Yeah. I thought, here's me. Oh, my stuff's getting really popular. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> I was clicking on but these names are like uh, they had no friends, and I'm just, just and just you can see you upload a video author and it gets ten likes, and you're like, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> oh, so with the Facebook, I've cut, I've cut off with the Facebook over the last six, uh, six, seven months as well. It's just repetitive stuff. As well. uh, I mean, it's just constantly just doing the same stuff. I know. You need, need to break it down. Maybe change. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to start changing it all up again. Nice one. So we're going to stick to the. The old school then with the records and the vinyl, or you go yeah, to... yeah, but doing the old school because most of 90% of the collection is trance, so it is mm. maybe like 10% is probably like Donk House, Hard House, Teddy Tracks, and stuff like that. There, yeah. but 90% is all like trance I, I loved playing the, the trance, the vinyls, like yeah, and all like there's no like, old techno stuff there as well. Mm. That, it doesn't really form me, like, no. I'll keep it because it, oh, yeah, builds your numbers up, yeah, <laughs> you're saying no, because it's the one we get in the way for like two quid a record when they were, when they were like 20 or 30 quid a record. Aye, uh, definitely, yeah. Then I'll have an eBay shop as well, so if I don't want any records, I'll just throw them on eBay. So, well, so. once the collection, maybe you get more yeah. money for another one. Because I say, I'm packing ones, I'll have like bleep, bleep sound, no, like uh, bleep sound, it's not really for me. Yeah, but they're very, very hard to come by, like, so they are. So, so with your record collection, when did you when did you start yours? I started mine just at the start, 1990, I think. Yeah. My first record was Scooter Move Your Ass. Right, right. And that was when it came out, like, I think in 95 or so. so and, um, and then I've just been trying to buy one or two. It was buying a couple of week and stuff, you know. So you've never bought, like, someone's class? You've always just bought, like, no, one or two? No, I've been, right. uh, well, right. I've been going on Discogs the last 
last few years when yeah. I've had a like you know my want list and I've yeah, been yeah, like, yeah. buying stuff I never got back in the day. I've uh, got a couple of hundred, about two hundred or something, but the rest are all like bought. As Just bought from yeah, for like KTMV and stuff. Uh, yeah, because I never. Like, funny you were saying like the records, you know, they were too heavy, but yeah, yeah. Do you know Wee J from the? I don't. The Shankle. He was no. a DJ back yeah. in the back in the day, right? And he um, he his mate used to steal us the records right. from HMV, right, right? Right, right? And I don't know how he got away with it because he was mm. like. You go in, tell me what you want, put them at the front, right? Yeah. So we would go like, we want this one there. And then we would go out and he would go in and he would walk out of HMV like that there. <laughs> you know, with a record stick, about yeah, 20 yeah, records. Yeah, yeah. And then he would flip and sell us them for like 50 p or something oh, like that there. Because you just go in, he used to get your three for, three for 10 yeah. at Juna Beats. But now one of Juna Beats is worth like 100 quid each. Yeah, you can't even like buy them. But now HMV, have you been in HMV recently? No. So remember the middle of the floor in HMV, it was all DVDs. Yeah. It's all records now. Is the it whole... still the same plot? Still was facing McDonald's? Yeah, it's yeah, still next to Game Soda's because I went in there where we can buy a 10 liter, a 10 liter album so did. Because it was only, there was only, it's mostly all rock and dance, uh, rock and pop, sorry. Yeah. So the whole middle of the floor of HMV now, it's just back to final Game Soda's. There's not one DVD in sight, so there's not. So is it all classics or new vinyls or what? It's all like, it's all, it's all old thing, but it's been reissued if you get me, yeah, you know, like yeah. the 180 grand final stuff, so. You might have to go in and have a look. Yeah, but you're, you'll be out of pocket to you. I wonder like, if we we'll get Wee Jay's mate and he can steal you or something. Yeah. He can, because <laughs> it's like, it's like 30 and 40 quid a record now. Oh, yeah, right. And they're not even full then. tracks. Oh. They're like fucking hot, they're like. Jesus. <laughs> but back in the 90s, when you buy one of them, they always had like EP, you know, like EP of like four tracks. You're getting like yeah. four full tracks in one record. So, you know, oh. so. Yeah, it was, I loved going around the, the different shops and buying the records. Like you say, when you're flicking through them and yeah. then you, you get the one, oh, there it is. Yeah. You know, it's like. That, but when I when I first started click, when I, I I was not, didn't know what I was looking for, but now when you when you know what you're looking for, are labels and uh, what the even just look like and what the what the covers look like, you know, you have like a wee sort of an England, don't you? Yeah, you know this one's gonna be good. This guy, so when I was doing that, this guy's knowledge of final was unbelievable. I'm telling you about Leo Needle Lizard. Right. I have this guy I used to listen to. Right. Um, so when I was doing a final live back about a year ago. I was taking him out and he was like, he just looked, I was going to that one. Hmm. It's that one, no, like by the way, no, it's by the color of the thing. Yeah. And every time he was killed, I was like, hey, you know what? He's like, I just know him. He's <laughs> fine. I was well, so he's a good guy. Yeah, it was so when it's... you bought the records, you like, you looked at the artwork, yeah. you studied it, and because yeah. you bought it, you know, yeah. like, so it's not like a day you get a million songs on a hard drive that you never see again. That's sick. Oh, I saw, that's people saying, for mine, it's not cracked, but it's just, it's just something about it. Yeah. It's hard to explain, so it is. Know, it's just something about the final. It's a collector's thing. Yeah, it's just a collector's thing. Um, but we'll go back to the uh, production then. Um, when did you... Uh, when did you first start putting your stuff out? Was it always just as Lee Keenan? Yeah, it was always, always Lee Keenan. So, so um, maybe first song I released. Look, it's hard to put, it's hard to pinpoint the middle because mm. I don't really that much stuff. It's yeah, just the head just starts to go. I first maybe maybe I've been DJing about thirteen years now. So and then maybe about ten years I've been producing music. So uh, I remember, I think it was like. It's, um, Jimmy was saying this guy Lee Keenan and I was listening to stuff and I was going Fit that there's pretty good has he been doing it long and he's like no and then I'm like looking at my stuff and going like jeez I've been doing this 10 years more than him and this is better than mine like, no fair <laughs> I, mean, I listened to your stuff no I was always struggling for the time I don't, I don't know what clicked me it was something just clicked because it was always before I listened back and it's always like jeez Christ that sounds fucking horrible so it does yeah. I don't know what it was. It's probably the same for you. It's just something clicked on it. Yeah, and then, sort of. And then, you learn a new bit and yeah. then you go, this is it. And then you learn another bit and then yeah. it just adds. It just all. Over like, time, yeah. it like just comes Can't together. Kind of like pinpoint like where like start going smoothly for yeah. us. Like, yeah. Do you like, um, whenever you release stuff, do you look or go, oh, I hate that now, I shouldn't have released Oh, that yeah. Hun, that's, that's my whole bad catalogue of music. Yeah. That's, I know. I think I listen to my music a couple of times and I was like, I fucking hate that. I know. I'm the same. Like, I, I love it. And I go, yeah. this is really good, it's brilliant. And then it release it, and then I go, yeah, I hate that now. Yeah, I, I don't know. See, I'm DJ, I probably, yeah. There's some songs I might never play. Yeah. I'm not so right. Oh. I only play like the new ones that have yeah, just hundreds. done, and any old ones. Like, <laughs> yeah. I was DJing there on Saturday, me and Jimmy was doing the Bounce Bingo, and I think the only old ones of ours played was like our very first one. Yeah. Was that part of love thing? Did it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's a good wee part of That's one of your best, but. I know, I was so like, good, well, yeah. the first one, like, yeah. that's a good idea. Because that's. Power Love on the what? I think it was in my top top forty eight hours finger boys. Yeah, yeah. The one yeah. with Von Ori was it? Ah, uh, he's he put it on the thing. Yeah, like, yeah. And yeah. uh, do you give him your your stuff or do you just use your no, own? No, he just 
no, no, I don't mind him doing it. Uh-huh. I don't mind people like if they want to take one of my songs put on the YouTube channel, they're more welcome to because uh-huh. it's like I think like you know like they could be taking your money, but at the same time they're no, promoting your song. Hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. So it's like a trade off in there because he's business. getting. Like that sweet loving and stuff, Hank, it's like 13, 14 million in ours. If he's, if he's monetized that from back in, it's like he's, uh, he's, I'm not trying, he's probably made thousands and thousands and thousands. Because his, his YouTube channel was actually the leader there for a while, so it was. Was it? Because I, I, like, I, I, there was like a new thing going about, like a YouTube. So it was like a YouTube hack going about, what's what they were doing was like, they were emailing you and then saying they're like a fake, no, like you're a fake sponsor. Uh, and then you sign up that sponsor and then they take over your YouTube channel. Oh, his YouTube oh, channel. same way it happened to your Facebook? Same way it happened to my Facebook, happened to his YouTube channel. He but he ended up getting it back so we did because there was another guy called um, Bounce UK. No, not, not Matthew. Because um, he put in the group chat that it always channel was away. I think he was mm. more happy because he's more like, like two competitors so we are. And I was like, we tried texting him and I was like, but he was, it's very hard to get in contact with us, uh-huh. but then it ended up coming back to us. I think always channel is the is the main one for all that sort uh, of stuff, isn't it? People like yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's what I, I like. More, I, think it's, I think it's the fizzles also, isn't it? Uh, that, 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 and it looks good. It. Yeah. 100%. Can you do do you do your own videos? Yeah, I do a few wonder show. I do everything myself. I do videos, music, everything. It's all totally just done by me, man. Uh, you do, you, pre- you put up like proper videos, don't you? Like yeah, I just so what I do. I just just get a four K after movie from YouTube, or. I used to do that, but now I got I got I got a copyright strike for using it one time because yeah. it was someone else's video footage. So it was like see that we back when that like off like yeah, that, yeah. you can download thousands of them on YouTube. So I just generally went another free to use. They're free to use. Oh, so you yeah, just type in free four K copyright free YouTube backgrounds. Just download one and put them in. Then I just put the music over. I done a couple on a uh, people VJ looks yeah. for free and like they're pretty good. But then the YouTube knows it's him. Yeah, so then yeah. They take them. Oh, it's YouTube knows YouTube knows you the way like that's why it goes through like a ta- 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 taxing system for 10 minutes and then within nothing you're like sitting more you know, like, oh, hey, man, am I going to get the money or yeah. somebody else <laughs> <laughs> wrong. Like, if I was uploading like 10 songs YouTube maybe like so could get monetized the R4 uh, are just sitting there but it's, but it's, it's gathering traction to your YouTube channel also, so yeah that's, uh, that's what I think, I think like, I was slow on the YouTube like but yeah I think, I, I, think, I think a lot of people are starting to understand that there's revenue to be made out of YouTube uh-huh. stuff and it's not like part of a change. It's uh-huh. Like it's it's not enough money for a job and stuff. It's not money that the the live off. You can see these like influencers are making mega Fuck bucks. Me, aren't yeah. They like? They're, yeah, and I think I think the whole as I said the whole passive income thing is uh-huh. a new generation thing. It's like with and YouTube, nobody... Instagram, TikTok. Yeah, and you could never have uh, have thought that this is the way we turned out like ten yeah, years ago. 100%, you can yeah. make money on yeah. Facebook and YouTube and yeah. your own. So back ten years, back five, for three years ago, I was making silt off my music. So yeah. over the last maybe a year or two, I've only started making revenue off it. Oh, that's good. Because I've because I've, I've I've slowly started publishing all my music myself rather than getting yeah. out like labels like um like Oscars label. DNZ. Like DNZ. Well, Matthew Kent, Kent, he actually sends you some of all these, so he doesn't know what I mean. He sent him their, their salaries until he actually, it's only like a week, 30 or 40 quid, but it's, it's, it's a precious enough yeah. one saying, this is your royalties, do you know what I mean? He's a very, mm. very honest guy, like that way. So I, I really, I appreciate stuff like that, there, do you yeah. know what I mean? But when you send your stuff off to like other labels and it's going to number one, it's not the point of it. It's apparently they've even saying here, there's tenor. Yeah. It doesn't, doesn't really matter, it doesn't matter. Well, it's just the point and purpose of it. Yeah. So I was like, I ain't giving, I'm not wasting my time a day just, just to make Emma's money. Mm. That's the way I seen it, so did. Yeah. So I just done it all myself. You have a good platform in your YouTube to do that. 100%, there, like, yeah. So happy to is. Um, we'll start to talk about production now. So what do you use in the it's still Fruity Loops? I still use Fruity Loops 21. So I to, still call it Fruity Loops. That's yeah, how old yeah, I am. I think, I, I, think, I, I think everyone calls it Fruity Loops, don't they? <laughs> it was Fruity Loops. It came yeah. out now, it's AFL. I tried able them, so it was in that BCM music. Yeah, I was doing Ableton so it was for the six months, but it was just my important so was yeah. I always thought more Ableton was more like for like a live performance yeah, sort of stuff. That's you know what, what I mean? it was designed for. Yeah, and I always yeah, so I was always like, Listen, I'm not a live performer. I want so I always. And then I was one reason why as well because I was going there and I was I was trying to learn a new software at the same time, mm. trying to learn a new software and trying to learn music because I, I always had like had a couple of years experience with FL. Do you know what I mean at that time? Yeah. So. I was trying to use Ableton that time, but Ableton wasn't for me. I yeah. think it's just, I think I'm just more comfortable on the FPL studio. Yeah. I mean, just for the workflow and stuff. And um, what did uh, what sort of VSTs and stuff were you using? Just mainly just basic ones that I won't use. Salem, massive. I haven't used massive in years. Have I? Yeah. I, massive still about? I don't know. That's yeah. Uh, massive was one of the first ones to start using. Yeah. Then, but my main ones would be Salem, Spire, and Serum. So it would. I, yeah. I, I like using Splice as well. 
Right, okay. Splice is very good for like them sounds that you like that if you just like come off and you just like want that sound. My well, Splice is very, very good. Splice right. is very intriguing. So it is. is that a subscription thing? So Splice is a subscription service. I didn't use it for so I had my I had so Splice is like I guess like twelve quid a month for like a hundred credits. So you use like so you download like a focal one yeah. credit, download another focal two credits, you know what I mean? Yeah. But you get some really good focus on it, well if you focus on it. So so I didn't use I didn't use Splice for about a year or two and I was just the credits were just building yeah. up building up had over like a thousand credits in it and I changed I got lost at bank card one time and I changed the whole thing and then, then just just stopped by my whole thousand credits and I was like I was like I was probably about a hundred could, could a couple hundred quid worse so I started using Splice over the last six months and it's been yeah it's been good cool. uh, that's a, I suppose that is good like, it's more of like, it's like a wee off base and if you just need something straight away it's yeah. just there for you you know what I mean rather than having to go on like power bend <laughs> or search do something just to, for just for that one specific sample uh, I, I, mean? I can't get like I was saying the critical mass like when QBS updated yeah, to QBS yeah. 10 that they only use 3.0 VSTs now so yeah, all my at, crack stuff right. went yeah so, we're gonna have so that's, to... that's the other thing as well so when I download the 3.0 stuff so with FL21 3.0 stuff mm-hmm. I was take me hours to install I was like what Oh, so nice. I, end up get, I end up getting bad anyway at the, at the end of it so I so <laughs> do, 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 do understand what the 3.0 stuff it's more mind boggling than uh, yeah so the, none of the 3.0 I think, I think it's more of like they're trying to cut down on the power so that's, a, that's yeah. what they're that's 100% because with the, well, the new on. FL Studio you can't even I talk, I, FL Studio 21 was out I think it's 30 years so it was I think, I think it's only been cracked over the last like couple of weeks because with the new FL Studio 21 you have to like sign in before you actually log in do you know what I mean you have to like mm. type in your email address and your password and every time it updates, you have to do that again. Oh, all right. So, so it's, they have cracked down really big time on, mm. on the piracy software as well, so we don't have... I think they alerted it to happen at the start. They did. To I, they definitely did, 100%, because it's, it was more like, you go on YouTube and it's like, they're just telling you basically, but now it's like, it's very... That's what we're talking about, Craig and Mass. Well, see when I have like, YouTube tutorials in, yeah, yeah. everything's for the loops, and yeah, like, and I course. can't find anything yeah. in QBS. <laughs> it's annoying, so it is. There's not much. QBS is very... It's, it's like one of the ones... It's like Ableton's FL Studio, but uh, I think it's like Ableton FL or 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 and Logic as well. Yeah, it's more yeah. it's a more old fashioned. Keep yeah. people like sort of over yeah. forty would use yeah. QBS first. Is it like Reason as well? Uh or, yeah. Reason sort of like I started in Reason. Actually. I tried it. I tried it. I tried to do Reason for like about ten minutes, and I was always like, I was trying to like drag you know, like the like the big stack of uh, and I was yeah. like, oh, I was so mind-boggling. You can so turn it around and you can yeah. rewire it and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, 100%. Because it's cause fucking mad. Because the reason why as well, because a lot of the Melbourne Burns DJs was using Reason to make a Sims. All right. And then then bring in the Sims. You can bring in like a MIDI map. So yeah, you... What time is it, James? Two minutes? What, two, two minutes, minutes to three? Well, God, I flew in there. I, mean, I know, for a second. I don't even really... know. Um, well, I've got two minutes. Fifteen, we'll go, so... For a possible, yeah. If you want, um, well, we'll do it, but just to make sure you're there in time, yeah, you know, 100%. Like, uh, about 10 past. No worries. Um, so, uh, you've done stuff with DNC and stuff, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, I've done stuff with DNC. Also, always sends his music and all that. I think he always needs that. If I was doing my live streams, and yeah. also, also, is a lovely person. I mean, he's, uh, he, he, he's that sort of person as well, the benefit that helps you as well. Mm. And he tells you straight like if he, if he doesn't want your music, he'll, he'll tell you like yeah. he'll tell you, it's like and he's caught me the bone like a few times like yeah. what? he's like what is this? And I'm like fuck Oscar like well, I didn't think I was going to get that reply off you. I've been lucky. I've been alright with Oscar. Like, yeah, because he, he doesn't like he doesn't like anything below one forty. I yeah. think he's, he's like I want this commercial house stuff. Mine yeah. wasn't commercial house. <laughs> so you're like, That's like right. Oscar, calm down, mate. Fuck <laughs> like. so, I guess it's uh, that Spanish stuff's really like yeah. it's like the old high energy sort of yeah, things yeah. in it like yeah. So, uh, so I mainly DNC and on Accelerators and Digital. I've never really sent my stuff to Bounce Heaven. Uh, I didn't really think my stuff was really fit, 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 it. fit in there. Because uh, I store, I, I sent a couple that weren't ex- like the Kenny Hayes Bounce and the, yeah. they never sold anything. Yeah. Like, And I just went, right, I'm never going there with that I kind of stuff again. Two, and I, and I never knew who sent the two as well. I always try to send the Benjamin. Benjamin says, go to person, try to text Andy. Andy just blanked me completely, so we did. Yeah, I think um, so I was just like, NT. I, Andy's a nightmare, like you yeah, said, yeah. something and three months later you would maybe yeah 100% fire. so that's why I just like I can just do this myself because then I start my own website as well yeah. start doing the old digital downloads off my own website yeah Steve so I mean, does that there and just doing packs and yeah 100% that's just, the way to go like I think so I'm basically, I'm, I'm basically my own label if you can yeah. not the other way I'm basically your so, own store yeah so that's... DistroKid as well so I upload them stuff DistroKid not puts it on Spotify Apple Music 
Yeah. I mean, that's, that's basically your distributor. That's basically your middleman, so it is. Cuts out all the... Yeah. Then you're getting 100% of the royalties. Uh, so if, you're, if you have a good platform, like that's definitely the yeah, way 100%. to go. Yeah, 100%. So it is. Um, who, who do you give your stuff to then when you finish it? Any using your A-list or no anybody that asks us? No one, mate. I just upload the free download, the man download. They can download it. I don't, <laughs> they don't, I don't like... Don't like specifically send it to someone because cause most people from Northern Ireland is mostly trans and horse. Uh, but I'm I get more people support me do from Glasgow than I do yeah. from, from Belfast. I'm the same, like of course. Glasgow is like quite big. You're not saying the George Boy or anything? anything? No, I've, I've talked to George and I've talked to Ian. You know, I sent her, sent her a record. She was looking at a record, but it's mm. like 10 10 out record I had. And I sent mm-hmm. them. It's a really piece of it. I try to send. George is very hard to get in contact yeah. with, I think. So, yeah, so I try to send him a few stuff, but I was always like waiting like five days on the reply and I'm so, And I can't wait five days to release it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So. So it's really something. They want down, they can down. They don't. They don't. I've been saying like I, George, he, he always used to like uh, reply, but some. Yeah. Sometimes recently, like he hasn't replied, and I'm like, maybe he doesn't want it no more. Yeah, so I'm like, I don't, don't want to send. I, I, I don't want to be bothering people. Yeah, as well. I, I don't, don't want to annoy them. I don't want people as well. So I, same with me. I don't want people. Yeah. So I, I don't like being annoyed. I don't want being annoying people too. Also. So. Mm-hmm. So you talk I, to anybody else in the scene then? Just the most people I ever talked to in the scene. Not most people, mate. Uh-huh. Yeah, so that's not just really being honest. See this whole bouncing thing. I I don't feel like I'm a part of it. Uh, I just feel like I'm just doing my own thing. Uh, I don't want to be a part. I just want to just do my own thing. See yeah. all this like, you see that like dunk news and all. Did you see so that? Awesome that's, that's like <laughs> that's like I get that real me and Sally. So that's why it's like I'm afraid I'm afraid even post something now. So I'm afraid uh, I'm yeah. on the dunk news twenty four. I was I was thinking yeah. yesterday when I seen it like I was going yeah I'd yeah. love to be on. I wonder what would happen <laughs> like you know it's just uh, always, what they would say about so it. So it's always like con- controversy as well. That's so funny. I just want to like, stay away from what they're doing. So I'm just happy just doing my own thing. I'm a say you, like you see people are like the bounce the bounce scene everybody stabbing each other but I never see anything like no, that. No I never there. see anything. I think I'm like, like, I, I haven't had a person like, but as I said, I've helped people along with their movie like Stephen because Stephen was really struggling at the time. I've literally won a team for every hour day, showed him how to mm. do it. I literally then um, see me with DJ Clevy. I was talking to this other guy called Andy Irwin. I actually went done his engagement party five months ago over in, mm. from Scotland. Yeah, I've never met him before, so then I'm actually, we're actually close friends now. So we are because so, he texted me every hour day and asked me to like, tell about mm. Kai's a child, like, Kai's here. I mean, Very it's not it shouldn't always be about music, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Also, so yeah, making so friends. I, 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 I've I've thought Sandy, I've called I've met him. Be, I'll call him one of my best friends. Like you know, I've, I've met him mm. through music, like so I have. Do um, I have you been to Scotland, DJ? Just yeah, apart so from that uh, one. So I've been. I went about uh, two years ago to Classic Brand through um JPS and yeah. what do you call that brand again? Sorry, uproar. Uproar. So I've done uproar with Jamie. Me and yeah. Jamie are oh, fuck me. Yeah. The puzzle and somebody wants to see this here, so we were like puzzling like somebody shack and got be present sales so it was right. day. And I was like you walked in and I was like it was weird, mate, so it was it was like a present sale, so it was Was it like it was, at, just, it was just facing the classic round, so it was Right, okay. So like because it was a big constant organ on the team, so I was only the sale that was when we were a good book. Yeah. 20, 20 oh, I remember James was it Jimmy quick. saying that there? Oh, was it like a me. It was like something of a horror movie. Yeah, like uh, you remember <laughs> saying that there. It's like, uh, like, like a hostel sort oh, of type thing. It was like a toilet for the whole for the whole of the. Po- it was like fuck <laughs> everybody had to share the oh, toilet. Oh Jesus, it was, it was rough, but I appreciate the gang and all. Like, but uh, it, was yeah. just, it was just funny out there. So because I thought we'd come over to be staying in a big hotel, <laughs> the red over. carpets, the champagne and all. No. Yeah. I I was over for one in the in Glasgow, and I was in like a, it was like about literally you put a bed. And yeah. see where that wall there, yeah, that yeah. was the size of the room. Oh, that's exactly, yeah. But it was like dead high tech or something, it was yeah. all UV lights. It was dead, yeah. it was like, you know, the way you, you imagine like the Japanese, the way they're all, yeah, 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 like, like the a week pods. But it was like yeah. all really high tech and yeah. all it was weird. Uh, but I look, Scotland's amazing. Like, they've asked me a few times, just more of the I couldn't, but Jamie does it right. I couldn't, uh, be, I couldn't do that with a check. You know, I need to, I couldn't be a DJ in every week, like I don't even come, no, I can't so be annoyed. Like, probably do it. Well, I'll do it once a year. We'll do it once a year or something. Like maybe like maybe once or twice a year is enough. But yeah, probably same as me. Like you probably only want to do the ones like you know it's going to be a good gig. Yeah. There's maybe people on it that you you want to see and yeah, you haven't seen in a while. Yeah, of course. Um, and their friends that you want to help out. That's my three sort of things yeah, that needs to be well. ticked off. I was I was money reason because it was a big Craig and like the Rambo. Yeah. Rambo's dolly off with me their class people. So I always want to go and meet everyone because uh-huh. I always like had I was talk to Rambo sometimes. Yeah. His dad's a legend, so it is. is it? And, and all the and they're all funny people, so they are. Yeah. Like, like, like most Sky people are so funny. That's why they're so into the music, aren't yeah. they? Like, I saw, as I said, it's always like, 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 like
it's always bounced and cheesy music over uh-huh. in Scotland. Like, as I say, and we get more people supporting, not supporting, but listening to your music more. Because yeah. you go on the other side of SoundCloud, it's always Glasgow. It's fucked up. Mine's the same. And South Africa is always like in the top three. Really? So, South Africa is really big for them, put like sort of sound. They love Paul Gann over I think, uh, I think yeah. Paul Gann's a superstar over there. Because yeah. I had um, some fella text me, door, I actually get in the club and we call him TX Music. He was like, text me as well. He's a good, nice guy. I mean, if text me away and I get around here, then. Mm. Do you know what I mean? If you start clicking on them, that's hundred percent. So end up making the Connor Maynard, Connor Maynard song if yeah. I ever. So I end up yeah. clubbing that one. But he was like saying, "Paul Gannon is like is like a fucking god. like god over." <laughs> like I always love the bootlegs. It's that, yeah. it's that bootleg sound the story yeah. over you. Um, do you? What was I going to ask you there? Ugh, I hate that there. Do you do ghost productions? Um, yeah, I've done f- I've I've done them for people, but I always feel like I've, I've done. Don't give it a hundred percent or something. Yeah, I always feel like I could do better with them or something. I feel like and I always feel like I'm always like undercharging. I've I've noticed some people. The someone asked me for a good person, I'd be like, "So much like going to charge you here." I said, "It's going to be like you feel guilty." Don't oh, you feel completely guilty? So I always say like fifty quid or something. I think that's a fair, a fair. Well, I do a hundred like so. Yeah, oh, oh, I see. Like you know, I'm fucking like I was, <laughs> if I could say twenty, then I'd say twenty quid. But I know people that are charged like two hundred and fifty quid. Uh, I like Kenny Hayes and stuff like that price. Like I your think. guy Ben. Ben, he does a lot. Of, I think he gets his stuff off Kenny Hayes, Ben yeah. Jamin. So yeah, yeah. And then he said, but he, but he, but he, he must be releasing like a track a week, like a track a week. I think he does so three or four a week. Oh, I think, and then, I think so he made eighty grand or something in Ghost Productions alone last year. He was saying whoa, to Jimmy, Jesus Christ. So whoa, and he's can I remember Kenny? Kenny Hayes was a part of KB Project. Yeah, KB because I have a few of his records. Yeah, and his music is always sound so uh, it's so always very quality. So so he must spend. Nah, he's been doing it like yeah. 40 years or something so he knows like. all the wee trips and the wee tricks and he was all around the world in house yeah. producer like. and he's very good at mixing up if you get me uh, he's not like his songs always don't sound the same yeah. do you know what I mean you get two of his different songs you think, you think they're produced yeah, by the you know they're people. his but they're the, he does do all like yeah. different sort of he does like different drop sounds yeah. it's, it's, I think it's oh that's really good like, I, think he, I think Ben got a really good producer so he did yeah, yeah. And, and I think um, people give me an elastic for a while. Yeah, don't, don't think they should be like. No, it's he's, like, a, and he's open, up, he's open about it, so it's not yeah. like he's trying to pass it off as his yeah, own. So. 100%. He needs to do their own. I like, think it's people that like. I think people are just jealous as well. Uh, people that like are sort of do it, but they're not as good. Yeah, yeah 100%. So then they're like jealous. Oh. Fuck, why is he doing that? There? Yeah, like, I can make a music and he can't. He's uh, getting more fucking. <laughs> just let him be. Man. Have a free leg, so I don't yeah. know. Mm. Just, if he's happy doing it, just let him be. Yeah. yeah. This will be on Dunk, Dunk News 24 yeah, now. Yeah, uh, <laughs> oh, fuck, 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 that's all I get to them, man. You know, so I clicked on my Dunk News and I, was, I, was, I, was, I clicked on the SoundCloud audio and all. Yeah. Like, was, you had it well, like, it's well played. It's like, like uh, just something new. Like, it's really r- well wrote yeah, out, isn't it? Class, like, he's yeah. spent there uni or something. Like, then he puts it, it in the, he put it in the in AI force converter and yeah, he puts it on the SoundCloud. On the SoundCloud <laughs> and he puts it on YouTube with a wee percent there. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, it's yeah. funny. Like, just, probably just mix up. I went on the day and I said, we just want some, we just want, um, they want no negative negative thing posts for them. <laughs> they just want the all all happy posts with you. So yeah. I feel sorry if your man Martin really put that big gig on and then everybody pulled out because oh, somebody was saying. I didn't mean Martin until until I was on Dunk News. I like after I am fucking nosy boy. I like on click as well. I want his profile and all that. Who is it? Yeah, of course, for example. Like, uh, I felt bad. I think, for... I think, I think that we paid to take off from so there. Yeah, that Dunk News twenty four. Yeah. Like it's just something different. It's something I seen really... Rick Shaw. He was, yeah. he was DJing last week, and he had a Dunk News <laughs> yeah. T-shirt on. He was DJing with. Rick was DJing with Excite. Excite. Yeah, Excite. 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 Yeah, yeah. Have you ever That's... seen any of their stuff? No. So, uh, so the manager of them was called Nathan Durkin. Right. So he was he was trying to help me with my website. So he was because I was stuck because he way really, like you can go on the like bounce happening you know, like when they have like we like their artwork you can have like we preview of the song yeah. playing. I just didn't know how to do it with my website, so I always wanted. No, like the wee preview, the 30 second preview. Yeah. So I was talking to him, he was trying to help me for a while. He did help me a bit. So then I just stopped talking that way, mate. Yeah. Then good. with Nick, Mike Nicholas, was, was the other one involved in it, I think. Mm, I don't know. Mike, he does the dunk stuff, so he does. Mm. But no, man, I just always feel like the my stuff doesn't just fit in with our labels. Yeah, it's sort of like mine the same. I'm close to like yeah. bounce just below yeah. like dancey sort of stuff. I think yeah. yours is probably sort of simple. Different. You know, like there's more Miller bounce, but it is the same sort of style. Yeah, I think it's it's not quite dunk, but it's yeah. dancing. I don't yeah. know. But then but, when you listen to Shugs and Billy Gillies, that's the stuff coming in there. I always said that. I always seen like, 
I was making my tour of style music a couple of years ago, but I think mm. we, you know, we got the recognition that they're starting to get. Yeah, I, I think know, it's more like, like Dunk Trance or Jamie's something. Jamie's cracking up. Jamie's like, who are these guys yeah. coming out? We've been doing this for years yeah, and they're playing all over the place. Really, I think it's more the younger generation just love it. So they yeah. just love it. It's the same way with like, I think it's like the news, like Shugs, Billy Gillies and Symmetric as well. Yeah. That's, that's that bass line, so it is. I know, it's just yeah. kick, kick and bass. Like Steve was saying, like all the 20 years I've learned to production and it's just went back to a kick and bass. Yeah, so yeah, it's very back to kick. And I love all that. I like, yeah. I like less is more. But I, I love it. That's just sort of class. I wish it was me in there. Besides I know. The world. Yeah, we, um, really, yeah, class. But then would you want to travel the world and... Oh, I see. That's the thing. That at this stage, now, just no, want the money, but not no, the not challenge. no. I, I can't be. I think I'm too old now. So. Oh, no, I can't see when I know it. get this certain age. Just like I've been too. I think like, yeah. done a lot like the calories and I, I, I think I was burnt myself out as well. DJ yeah. and party and DJ. Do you know what I mean as well? Whenever too, I just can't be not over as well. Sometimes whenever I know I have a gig like, coming I would, up, I would like to get all in big gigs uh, that they had got like to like the music because it was always feel like. It's I think like, like I was the first one to sort of bring that sort, uh, sort of sound in the Belfast and, yeah. and, and in the Northern Ireland, like I sort of Melbourne, mm. but they off, but yeah. It was getting done before with like obviously different Simps and all, but mm. it was just that kick bass and just that basic. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do, yeah. Um, yeah, that's I get in a bad mood whenever I know I'm gigging that third week. I just, oh no. I know what I always do. I always go like, why did I, why did I do this for? Yeah. <laughs> I go like, why did I? Do? I get there really anxiety and see when I uh-huh. go and go into like Scotland, I'm like at the oh. airport and I'm going, yeah. I was please, me. I, please I, crash. I wasn't going, so <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't going to go until Andy goes. I guess my thing. They can't be let me down. Yeah. Now. Like Andy, that's why I just need to boot the hole. Uh, and that's just me. That's all. And I you, need. whenever you get there and you're on stage, did, did like that nerves go, go away? No, I was or? fun. It was like just. It was. It was just like meeting my, like a friend uh. I knew all my life. And his, his partner was in the back seat and just went. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, because we haven't met before. And yeah, we were like, yeah. Oh. And she was like, "Oh, God, she's a lovely person too." It so. is funny, like when you you see people, you meet people from the Facebook. Yeah, yeah. And people come up to me and like, "All right, Ron," and but I don't know them because yeah, yeah. I don't know their face. Yeah, yeah. But they have to tell me their name, and then I go, "Ah, oh. uh, yeah, yeah." And I always get that people like, and I'm always pop, pop, pop my head down and fucking walk away. Yeah, you don't wanna. I am the same. He's got years ago, so like, there's Lee Keenan. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I will. But how embarrassing for me when I do the Chinese now. <laughs> open the door and I go where's that wee guy off Facebook I'm like, I'm, I was just listening to you on yeah. YouTube and I'm like you do every thir- you get good forward, you? You, get, you do every Thursday thir- thir- uh, yeah. yeah, so that's, yeah, that's why I want to do a Wednesday for yeah. you, know you, do, you know you do yours on a Thursday I don't yeah. want to do it on the weekend as well because I know we do it on the weekend I, <laughs> I, I end up having to drink so <laughs> I know as soon as I drink, drink one drink that's me yeah that's, I have that's a couple what, of non-alcoholics yeah like, is so that right uh, you pruny you drink pruny I yeah, yeah, love yeah. it like, like oh, beers no you don't like it no I don't like beer at all <laughs> cider spirits or cider yeah it's an alcoholic fucking choice well I had I had two bottles of old English you know like the cider when I was 11 yeah and I threw you up everywhere oh. and see from then I can't even smell cider anymore yeah. see once I smell I'm like that's me with that's like me 30 with, years later that's me with beer Guinness yeah. Guinness a little weeks back I was like uh, I got the I got the drinks at first tea so it yeah. <laughs> it's um, very thick as well what time is it James in? Yeah, oh, we're better wrapping it up now because Lee yeah. has to go. Had to go. <laughs> so thanks, Lee. It was uh, no worries. Thank you for the conversation. Thanks for coming down. Yeah, like, and, um, felt like we ten minutes or just so. Yeah, I do. It's done. Yeah. Like, see when you have the headphones on. I just back when I was like, it's going to take ears. I was like, no, <laughs> no, it's me. It's us. No. I think I just need a boot and holders to do stuff. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean, just well, I'm glad I'm you can high school. With, I think all the worst things are going to happen. Yeah, rather than all the positives. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sort of thing, so. I know. I'm, I'm exactly the same. Yeah, exactly the same. But the more you do things like this, the easier yeah, they become. Yeah, So where can people? find your website is it up and running yet or are My you still website, working on it www.leakingdj.com yeah. it's been up for a lot of years now so it's been up for All the last right. couple so but this is the first you've been able to buy for, from no you've then? been able to buy from from USB CDs I've stopped doing the CDs because CDs just people just don't have the time to do it mate you can someone orders five CDs it takes 50 minutes to burn five CDs so USBs digital downloads really yeah and I was maybe going to do a couple of sample packs but maybe down the line maybe do something like yeah. that yeah um, and we can just get you on Facebook and Facebook, YouTube. Facebook, it's just leaking DJ. It's just everything. TikTok leaking DJ, SoundCloud leaking DJ. Everything is just leaking DJ, basically. Dead yeah. on, happy days. Uh, so go check them out. Um, and we'll leave it there then. We'll get you away. No worries, Ron. No Thank worries. you very Thank much. You Thanks much. for having me. Bye. Bye.